So how's it going everybody? Welcome to Strength Journal episode 26. I just finished making lunch. So today we got some pasta with tuna and shrimps. So that's basically it. And yeah, that's what I'm having for lunch. And later on in the day, we are training legs. So see you then. Alright, so leg day complete, so let's talk about the workout. So after 5 minutes of like cardio and some mobility preparation, I start with the first exercise, which was to remain deadlift for 3 sets of 8 to 10 repetitions. I did a couple of warm-up sets just to find my technique and find my groove, and then I start doing my first working set. The RDL has been a movement which I struggled with quite a bit in the beginning, because I just couldn't find my right technique, and my lower back just took over a lot. But right now everything is feeling a lot better, but my technique is still not quite there where I want it to be. So here are three things that help me with my RDL technique. So one would be the engagement of your core or your body as a whole. So before you start to lift, really brace your abs, push your shoulders down and push them slightly back. And that should help with just putting your body in the right position when you're doing the exercise but also help with just force output because then your body is just in a better position to um, produce force and that should help overall. Um, the second thing would be your head positioning. So I personally prefer to tilt my head downwards or just look like straight forward instead of tilting my head upwards. I personally don't know why this works better for me, but maybe it could be that if I tilt my head upwards, I just start to overextend my back a bit and that's why I feel my lower back more that way. And overall, my technique then just feels a bit more off if I do tilt my head upwards. But that could also just be personal preference. And the third thing would be to would be the most obvious thing and also the most important thing is to push your hips back. So the RDL or any kind of deadlift movement is a hip hinge and other spinal flexion movements. And this means that you're not supposed to just bring your torso down to the floor, but instead you're supposed to push your hips back. And that way your lower back will stay more in a flat slash neutral position. And yeah, you'll get better muscle activation in your hamstrings and your glutes. Like I said before, my technique is still not quite there where I want it to be, because I still do feel a lot of lower back when I'm doing the exercise, which is also probably due to the fact that my lower back is just weak in comparison to my hamstrings and my glutes because I just haven't been training heavy hip hinges in the past. But also, I find that when I'm doing the exercise, I do have the tendency to squat down a bit at the bottom. So my knees do bend a little bit too much, I think. So if I, if I would keep them a bit more straight, I would also probably get a better mind-muscle connection or just a better feeling in my hamstrings. But I also want to add that I think with exercises like Jermaine Deadlift, I think that mind-muscle connection then is not super important because in the end, if you're executing the anatomical function of a muscle under load, you will train that muscle group. So for example, for the hamstrings and the glutes, the anatomical function in an RDL would be hip extension. So if you're doing that, you will train your hamstrings and your glutes and they will get stimulated. And also the RDL involves a lot of different muscle groups at the same time. So it is normal to also feel some other muscle groups like taking over or to feel some other mu muscle groups in general. So it is normal to feel like your spinal erectors, maybe some upper back, because these muscle groups are also working heavily during the RDL. So I would just focus on really trying to execute the function of the muscle and do that properly. And then everything just should like work, I guess. But there's also nothing wrong with trying to correct your, your technique in a way which maybe targets the 
muscles a bit better. Then up next, I continued on with my favorite leg exercise, the Bulgarian split squat for 3 sets of 6 to 10 repetitions. I am going slow and controlled here and I'm also pausing for a split second at the bottom. This makes this exercise more brutal than it already is, but I would also say more effective for hypertrophy. Because one, you um, will have to use less load, which is just more convenient for the Bulgarian split squat, because picking up heavy dumbbells is, can be a bit annoying. Two, um, it will make the exercise more stable, because I find that if I go really fast on the exercise, I tend to lose balance and the exercise just doesn't feel as good in comparison to if I'm going like more slow and controlled. So yeah, that's why I basically like to go slow and controlled here. So yeah, I would also definitely recommend to like take a short break in between legs because if you're going back to back, no rest between legs, you yeah, you will just suffer a lot more and probably the um, rep quality of the second leg will be just a lot worse than your first leg. So definitely take short rest in between your legs and that should definitely help with executing the movement better and will just help you get through your sets, both from a physical perspective but, but also from a mental perspective. I really love Bulgarian split squats, they feel great for me, I can push them really hard and they are also responsible for a lot of my leg growth, especially in my glutes and my quads and I will definitely keep doing them in the future. In my next training block I want to try out the Smith Machine split squat and see how that feels. I think using a Smith Machine is a good choice for this exercise because it will make the exercise more stable because you don't have to worry about balancing. Two, I think it will also probably make loading the exercise a bit more convenient because holding heavy dumbbells can be quite tiring. And with a Smith machine, you can just like put your plates on the bar and then just go for the squat. So I think that will definitely be a nice exercise variation. Now that we are done with our leg compound movements, we are continuing on with some isolation and we're starting with the leg extension for the quads for 3 sets of 20. And before you think that I'm just doing like 3 sets of 20 with like a light load and just getting a pump, no, no, no. We are, or I chose a weight which I can't do for 20 and then I did as many drop sets as needed in order to get to, 10, in order to, get to 20 repetitions and I did that for all of the 3 sets. So my quads were on fire after that and I definitely felt the pain and the burn afterwards. So using techniques like drop sets um, is a great way to get in a lot of effective reps or effective stimulating reps for hypertrophy in a short amount of time because every time you do a drop set you would already be quite close to failure and this means that all of the repetitions that you do will be quite effective for hypertrophy. Because in a regular set, if you're doing a set of 10 for example, the first five repetitions are not that stimulatory for hypertrophy, but the last five or the last four, three, two, one, the closer you get to failure, these repetitions are the ones that are really important for hypertrophy and the ones that count and will cause the most muscle growth. Then doing drop sets or myo reps is just a, like a very efficient way to get in a lot of these um, yeah, effective repetitions, I guess. I'm also going slow and controlled here on the eccentric when I'm doing your leg extension. I get a better mind-muscle connection that way. I feel more my quads. And just in general, I find it with isolation exercises, I don't really see a good reason in going very fast, explosive, using a lot of momentum. 
because I get a better mind-muscle connection if I go slow and controlled. I get better muscle activation, I would say. And I said before that mind-muscle connection is not an important when it comes to compound movements, but I find that with isolation exercises, it is something that is really important because if you're doing something like a leg extension or a bicep curl and you're not feeling your quads or your biceps, you are probably doing the exercise wrong because those are isolation exercises. They are supposed to only target one muscle group and if you're feeling something else taking over, you should probably adapt your technique in some way or just choose a different variation. After the leg extension, we got the leg curls for three sets of 20 as well. And here I did my reps, which means that I chose a weight which I can't do for 20 again. And then I did a set failure or close to failure, rested for five to 15 seconds, and then went again and did as many mini sets as needed in order to get to 20. And basically the same logic applies here when it comes to why I'm doing this. So I just want to get in a lot of effective reps in a short amount of time. And that's a nice way to do it. And it's also just really brutal. And yeah, I definitely felt my hamstrings afterwards. When you're setting up a lying leg curl machine, um, always make sure that you're setting it up in a way so that your legs are straight in the bot at the bottom position and that way you get the full stretch on your hamstrings, which is important for hypertrophy. Walking after these two exercises was definitely a challenge. Then we got calves. Yeah, I did some machine calf raises for a few sets of 10 to 20 repetitions. I honestly hate doing calf raises. I think training calves is just super boring. My calves are already pretty good developed, so I don't want to grow my calves anymore. <laughs> I just want to maintain them. So I'm only training them once a week with three sets. And yeah, did some machine calf raises here. Originally, I wanted to do the machine standing calf raise but my hair got stuck in the shoulder pad and that just was super uncomfortable. So I decided to switch to a different machine and this one felt quite good, I would say. On the first two sets, I used a heavier load and that felt kind of weird on my knees because you have to, have, you have to keep your knees, knees extended when you're doing the exercise. And I don't know, that, that just felt a bit awkward. So I decided to reduce the load on the last set and that felt a lot better. The last exercise of the day was the cable crunch for three sets as well. And with this one, I find that it's quite difficult to um, get the technique right. So what you want to focus on is bringing your chest down and rolling your back as much as possible. So it's basically the complete, the complete opposite movement of a hip hinge. Because on a hip hinge, you want to push your hips back and like keep your um, lower back nice and flat. But with the cable crunch, you want to keep your hips fixed. So you don't want any movement in that area, but you want to round your spine as much as possible. And that's how you engage your abs. So what you don't want to do is to keep your back extended because that way you don't really engage your abs. 
And you also don't want to move your hips around because then you're just taking all the tension off your abs basically. So yeah, and that was basically the workout. And after that I did some posing. So I would say my legs look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. And when it comes to which areas I still want to grow in my lower body, I would say that I'm happy with my glutes and my calves. So I don't really want to grow these muscle groups anymore. My hamstrings are also fairly well developed, but I wouldn't mind growing them a bit more, but I definitely want to grow my quads. So my next training block, my quads will be the focus of my lower body training. I'm also just really not good at posing when it comes to lower body. I just don't really know how to position my legs or how to contract them in order for them to look really good. So if you have any tips, you can definitely post them down below in the comment section. But that was the whole workout. It was a lot of fun, a lot of pain. And performance was pretty good, I would say. Just how a good leg day should be. So if you enjoyed today's Strength Journal episode, I would highly appreciate if you press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share your thoughts and feedback down below in the comment section. I will see you next time. Much love and see you on level 100. Peace. Mm -hmm.